from the usual shop. But in both cases, this we have two things or one thing in common. In both cases, we are dealing with a learning process. Learning is mostly misunderstood. My definition of learning is to discover that something is possible. It's not just the taking in of some information. And all I want to do is here to show you that it is possible to discover means of ways whereby you can grow and develop your potential, iron out difficulties in your life. Now this, of course, cannot be done in a short workshop. But maybe I can plant a few seeds, take away a few of the covers that will open up possibilities. Again, let me repeat. Learning is to discover that something is possible. We are using most of our energies for self-destructive games, for self-preventing games. And I mentioned already that we do this and prevent ourselves from growing the very moment something unpleasant, something painful comes up. At that moment we become phobic, we run away. We desensitize ourselves. We do all kinds of means and ways to prevent the growth process. Again, we have to go another step further and say that the neurotic suffering is suffering in imagination, suffering in fantasy. Somebody calls you son of a bitch and you think you are suffering, you feel hurt. But you don't, you are not hurt. There are no bruises, there are no uh, actual injuries there. It is your so-called ego or vanity that is hurt. You can even go a step further and say, when you say you feel hurt, you actually feel vindictive and you want to hurt the other person. So what I like to do in the beginning is to take a few of you, ask you to come on the hot seat and work on the phenomenological basis. This means on the awareness of the ongoing process. If you live in the present, you use whatever is available. If you live in your computer and your thinking machine, or in those obsolete responses in your rigid way of coping with life, you stay stuck. So let's take a few words of you, whoever wants to come forth. And the more stage fright, the better this. So let's work very primitively, even if we structure the whole thing a little bit rigidly, pompously for the first moment, you very soon will see the meaning of it. So start with the sentence, now I am aware of. Now I'm aware of um, tension in my right arm. Now I'm aware of faces looking in my direction. Now I'm aware of you, Fritz, and I'm now I'm still aware of my hand. <clears throat> and now I'm aware of changing my position to a more relaxed position. Uh, now I'm aware of the box in front of me. Now I'm aware of uh, waiting for 
be pressured to be taken off it. You see, at this moment, he jumped into the future. The word waiting for means he stopped being aware of what's going on. Except if we now reduce his anticipation to the ongoing process, and we do it with the quest of how. How covers all possible means of behavior. How do you experience waiting? I experience waiting as, uh, right at this moment, as a tremendous tension here. Definitely tension throughout my whole body, plus a certain fearful blankness starting to cover my thinking process. Yeah, I have to add what I'm aware of. I'm aware that you're doing a lot of smiling. And even when you talk about unpleasantness, like the unpleasant tension, you're still smiling. And to me, this is inconsistent. <laughs> this may be true. Um, it's a weapon, I suppose. Uh, what are you doing now? Intellectualizing? Yeah, in defending yourself. Be aware of that. Yes. No. So maybe my remark was unpleasant for you? Um, perhaps a little bit, yes. Are you now aware of your smile? Uh, don't you like me smiling? Were you aware of what you did with that sentence? Mm, I thought I expressed a certain amount of hostility, perhaps. You attacked me. What well, are you aware now? I didn't mean to attack you. Now, again, are you aware that you're getting defensive again? Yes, I have a very defensive nature, I think. Okay, now next one. I just want a short example to reinforce the awareness basis. You see, what we're doing is simply sampling, simply to get acquainted with the ongoing process or awareness and how the different people avoid the full involvement in what is there. We can also now take the next step and see what are you in touch with. So there are three possibilities. You can be touch, in touch with the world, you can be in touch with yourself, or you can be in touch with your fantasy life. The fantasy life of the middle zone was first discovered by Freud under the name of complex. And it's the middle zone which is the insane part of ourselves. It's the fantasy, whenever this fantasy is taken for a real thing. You know, the real insane person is known as a person who says, I am Napoleon, that he actually believes that he's a Napoleon. If I say, I would like to be Napoleon, you wouldn't call me crazy. But if I say, I am Napoleon, oh, march to Austerlitz or whatever it is, you say, what is this queer behavior of that guy? And especially a zone there in which we are fully and absolutely crazy. That is in our dreams. And we see later on that just these dreams, the middle zone, has assumed so much importance in our life that we are out of touch with the reality which is either that reality, the world, or the other reality, our authentic self.
All right. Do you also start with this experiment? Now I am aware of. I'm immediately aware of that your attention has turned from me. I turned on to me. That my voice seems quavering. That I, my mind is sort of split between a fantasy and being aware of my body. Now my mind is split between fantasy and body. For me, mind is fantasy. And mm -hmm. when you say your mind is split, I guess you say my attention is split. Right, exactly. If my body is in my mind, my mind is on my body, that's where my attention is. I still feel a quivering, like a shivering leaf in my chest. I notice that my hand is fluttering around a little bit. I pointed to my chest. Um, the quivering is rising into my throat. I'm aware that I'm staring at the carpet. People's feet are moving. Yeah. Are you also aware that you're avoiding looking? Looking at me, looking at anybody? Yeah. I am not looking before now. People seem very tense, um, sort of suspended. Very real. So can you now start shuttling between self-awareness and world awareness? The self-awareness is symbolized by the word I and the world aware by the word you, I and thou. And if you have too much I, you're self-centered, withdrawn and so on. If you have too much Thou, you're paranoid or aggressive or businessman or something like that. Well, I have been looking at you. I'm looking at you now. And the more I look at you, the less quivering I feel inside myself. As some of you seem to look right straight at me, and some of you look out from the side of your head or from the top of your head. Surely you seem to be looking at me from below, above, and Don, you seem to be from the side of your head. No, I shut the big to self I feel a, a great ball of tension in here. My mouth is dry. No, I shut the big to world awareness. seem to want to focus on one or You're another. still in the eye. Uh, Gordon, you're looking very confident, but a bit fierce. Yeah. Now you saw him. Now shut it back to yourself. Um, that makes me feel confident. <laughs> that you're confident. Now you see... You get an integration. World and I are one. If I see, I don't see. The world just is there. As soon as I see, I strain, I pierce, and do all kinds of things except having a world. Okay, thank you. my heart beating. My hands are cold. I'm afraid to look out. 
my heart still pounding. We, we, how you avoided me? You it looked at me and quickly looked away. This, what are you avoiding when you look at me? Be aware that you were starting smiling when you looked at me. Mm -hmm. What kind of smile did you experience? I'm afraid. I try to hide my fear. Is your fear pleasant or unpleasant? You feel comfortable with your fear? Yes. My heart's not pounding so much anymore. Now try to get more the rhythm of contact and withdrawal, of coping and withdrawal. This is the rhythm of life. You flow towards the world and you withdraw into yourself. You flow towards the world and withdraw into yourself. That is the basic rhythm of life. In winter we are more withdrawn, summer more outgoing. During the night we withdraw deeply and during day we are more busy with coping. If I miss a word, I withdraw to my dictionary and come back with when I found the word to fill in the gap in the sentence. So this rhythm goes on and uh, the I and thou together form a unit. And if you, if you have this middle zone, then this middle zone comes between you and the world and stops you from functioning adequately. Especially if in this middle zone there are catastrophic expectations or complexes that distorts your view of the world and so on. We have to deal with this later. Right now I want to give you a feel of the contact and withdrawal situation. I possibly withdraw as deep as possible. Go even away from this room and then come back, then you see again us. And see what will happen if you try this with us. I feel frustrated. I want to do something. Say this again. I want to do something. are bright. Colors are bright. That is a good symptom. This is what we call in Gestalt therapy a mini Satori. She begins to wake up. Did you notice this? The world becomes real. The colors are bright. And this sounded very genuine and spontaneous. Do you come from? Your name is Anne. Anne. I'm aware of uh, a tension in my head. It's all it's all around my head. I feel it as a a tingling and uh, tightening. Uh, like. My head is going to sleep, like a limb goes to sleep. It, and it uh, burns as well. No. Go to the world. What are you aware of in your environment?
I'm aware of it. The boy here who looks very kindly towards the view. I seem very sort of kind and understanding. Now we come to another condition in Gestalt therapy. We never gossip about anybody who is here. We always try to establish contact. Can you say the same sentence to him instead of gossiping about him, say mm -hmm. this to him? Mm -hmm. I feel, I feel that you're being, that you feel very kindly and sympathetic. I withdraw again. You were aware that you were crying a little bit. Mm -hmm. So why don't you say so? I'm aware. I'm aware of crying. Um, sort of just being uh, upset. I feel it is sort of. Um, the upsetness, the sort of patterns uh, broken up in some way. Now come back to us. This time you came to me. Mm -hmm. How do you experience me? I experience you as a, a very um, uh, real, a very sort of definite uh, person who's quite close and is, uh, is here with me. Well, not just with me, but with everybody that's here. Now go away from me again. Parting is such sweet sorrow. I feel uh, I'm aware of tension in my head. Um, so a tightening particularly above my ears. Can you close your eyes mm -hmm. and find out how you do this? What are you tensing? How do you produce your tightening? I feel I pull things in and mm -hmm. I pull things together. So come back once more. <clears throat> I feel the um, group has sort of uh, opened up a bit. Yeah. Now, this is the basis of expanding awareness. We don't need LSD or any of the artificial means of dressing us up. If we produce our own awareness, if we do it ourselves and not relying on artifacts, we have all the basis for growth that we need. So let's have a break.